happy. Hey, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another Friday Faith Foundation episode on the Robin Graham Show. I am your host, Robin Graham, a business growth strategist and coach specializing in growing businesses without social media, especially if you are in the health and wellness industries and or mental health industries, therapists, counselors, nutritionists, health coaches, you name it. My medical background lends to an expertise that helps me really understand what you as a practitioner are going through, what you're trying to do to impact lives and transform lives and make them better and healthier. And I'm passionate about that. So if you fall into that space, let's connect. But for today, the title of the episode is You've Got This Because God's Got You. And I want to encourage you after the show to go over to the show notes because I have a plethora of links there for you, linking to other episodes as well as free resources and additional information. So the show notes are always a plethora of value that you can kind of go down a rabbit hole and learn as much as you possibly want to. All right, so let's dive in. Life can feel challenging and overwhelming, sometimes downright brutal. Am I right? But you can have confidence that you'll get through whatever it is because God's got you. You can find comfort in scripture that you've got this because God's got you. No matter the experiences, life, business, even the days that you want to curl up in a ball and do nothing but cry, God's resting his hand on you and he sees you as his radiant, righteous child. Psalm 34 reminds us, those who look to him are radiant and their faces shall never be ashamed. I hope that verse gives you comfort the way it gives me comfort. So when you don't think you've got this, when you're going through a struggle, disappointment, you feel discouraged, I want you to ask yourself these questions. The first, is this more than God can handle? Your situation may be more than you can handle, but nothing is impossible with God. God can handle anything and he's got you always. Matthew 28, 20 reminds us that when Jesus spoke to the disciples, he said, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Another verse that reminds us that no matter what seems impossible to us, Jesus can handle it is Matthew 19, 26. Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. There's nothing under the sun that God cannot handle or help you navigate if you seek him. But when doubt overcomes you because well, the struggle feels too much. The decisions are too overwhelming. The workload too intense. Remember the words of the father of the boy in Mark 9, 24. He said, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. Ask God to help you with your doubts and unbelief, with your struggles, your fears. He wants your trust and belief in him. And if you seek him, he will help your unbelief become undeniable belief. He wants to be in a relationship with you. He will speak to you when you are in a relationship with him. Question number two, is there something I can learn right now? Nope. I do not believe that God lets bad things happen to teach us a lesson. Bad things happen because the world is wrought with sin and Satan prowls about looking for souls to destroy. And we as humans often make choices that result in less than favorable circumstances. In addition, since the fall of man, illness and other nasty things happen. Not to punish us, but because the perfect world no longer exists, at least not until we get to heaven. What would we have to look forward to and hope for if everything here on earth was perfect now. Would we want to be in a relationship with Jesus like he wants us to? Now, that is not to say that God can't use bad for good. So when experiencing a challenge or life seems impossible and overwhelming, 
look for a lesson that you can garner and apply to your life and to serving others. Okay, question number three. Can I find something to be grateful for in this situation? I recognize that it is not always easy. It is often difficult to find things to be grateful for, especially when life, business are so challenging. Maybe your pipeline is dry. Maybe the person that you thought was a perfect client fit your soulmate client description. You just knew they were going to be great to work with. They didn't convert. As small business owners and entrepreneurs, we will experience ebbs and flows, times of feast or famine in our businesses. It's unfortunate, but it's reality as entrepreneurs. Likewise, we'll experience challenging circumstances in our personal lives. But no matter what we are experiencing, there's always something to be grateful for. Practicing gratitude will help you see that there is more good than bad. It will open your eyes to how God works in your life and your business. Once you implement a gratitude practice, you will notice that there is more positive than negative, even on days that feel really heavy and hard and bad. Gratitude can stimulate the re release of positive endorphins in your brain. The result is an increase in happiness and happiness improves productivity. So even if business isn't going well, if you practice gratitude, you will have more energy and creativity to be more productive and build momentum and turn things around. Because God's got you and has a better plan than you can imagine, you can rest assured that everything will work out in your favor. Later, you can reflect on the challenging time and see where his hand was in your life and business. And then you'll feel even more grateful. The fourth question, can I ask for help? You are not meant to do life and business alone. God provides help through scripture, the Holy Spirit, and other people. Often you don't know what you don't know. Therefore, God or others can help you identify what's holding you back or identify the best solution for the problem, guide you to the next right steps to take. God also speaks through other people. When you seek his knowledge, blessing, or advice, he will provide it. But you have to be open to hearing his response. And patience is also key because his timing is different than our timing, but it's important to remember that his timing is limitless and perfect. Ours is not. He sees the whole picture. We only see what's right in front of us. And beyond being open to hearing the response, you must discern what you hear. A good principle is that if the response that you think is from God is faithful to scripture, aligned with scripture and his character, it is him speaking to you. If there's any risk that what you are hearing is not going to please him, it is not from him, but from your own thoughts or someone else's opinion. This is like a litmus test of truth. And sometimes you have to pray about it and read scripture to confirm what he's saying. Paul reminds us in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 to pray continually. If you're like me and praying can feel hard sometimes because you aren't sure what to say or how to say it, start with this prayer that I use because it gives me so much comfort and it's just a place to start. Lord, please calm my heart and quiet my mind so that I may hear you and know your will for me. Then pause, sit in stillness and give him time to answer you. Don't rush. I know how easy it is to do so. Trust me. I am the worst at this. I want an answer now. I don't want to wait. I just want more clients. I just want whatever to be solved and ready to go and just dive straight in. So for me, this is this is hard. This is a struggle. Um, so if it is for you, know that I'm I'm working on this alongside you. I am a work in progress. So is everybody else really, right? I mean, we're all learning and growing at the same time, but 
I can say that when I get quiet and listen, when I pay attention, I re will receive answers every single time. Now, whether I like the answers or not, that's a different story because they can feel hard, intimidating, and sometimes terrifying, especially if he's calling me to do something that's out of my comfort zone. For me, that might be speaking. For me, that might be making big shifts in my business, like really niching down to a specific population. But this is where obedience and praying continually come back into play. God's got you. So you can do hard things, but only through him, not alone, as I've learned, because I, of course, always try to do things the hard way first. All right, question number five. What do I need to be able to follow God's calling and his will for me? This is a self-discovery question. Do you need more belief in God, in yourself, or even in your clients? Perhaps it's resources you need, time, money, tools, or someone to help you and guide you with what you need to know, to identify what you don't know that could solve your problems and make life easier and help your business grow faster. Or maybe you need clarity on the next steps to feel confident as you grow your business. Your needs will vary and be specific to you and your business, your clients, and really the phase of life that you're in and the phase of your business. We will need help. So if you answer yes to this question, don't feel embarrassed, ashamed, or intimidated. None of us have all the answers. But we go farther, faster, when surrounded by like-minded people who will guide, teach, coach, celebrate, and hold us accountable when needed. A bonus of having others in your corner is that you can refer, or they can refer you to the right resources, systems, tools, processes, so that you can simplify the business building process and have someone guide you along the way. You may need to release things that aren't serving you. To release perfectionism, comparison, self-doubt, fear, imposter syndrome. Because Satan, not the Holy Spirit, inspires those feelings and emotions, those thoughts. And those will all hold you back. They'll drag you down. You won't progress. God can't work in you if you are holding on to these things tighter then you are grasping for him and his will for you. Are you willing to surrender your business to him and let him be your CEO? You will see transformation, growth, and more positive impact when you do. It's like a business detox when you let God be in control and guide you. Life just gets easier. When we pray and seek God's will of us, instead of asking what our desires are, what we want to come to fruition, when we listen and hear him, he widens our vision, changes us, and possibilities ensue. God's got you. And I'm here to, for continued support, love, and prayers. You've got this, friend because he's got you. Now, I wanna put a plug in for the Success Without Social Academy. If you are tired of navigating entrepreneurship alone and want support, check out the Academy. The Academy is for you if you are an entrepreneur or small business owner in the health and wellness and or mental health industries. Learn more about the Academy or schedule a call with me by going to the show notes. The links will be there for you for easy access. You've got this friend. Go forth and do your thing with God at the helm.